So the vision of our worship and songwriting ministry uh, is to be able to write songs for our church. Um, because right now, I believe that, that uh, God is calling us to write songs. Uh, he's, he's calling for us to, to cry out to Him in, in our own unique ways. Um, you know, for too often we're you know we're singing our we're singing other people's songs, right? And and, and uh, how great they they are. I mean, I love Bethel as, as much as the next person, but they're not authentic to us uh, and and our church needs right now. <clears throat> so I, I feel like like the songwriting ministry is really touching on that. There's songs that are being written, and we're interceding for our our congregation, and that is so important. Um, so it's just been a blessing to be able to to do that here at IPC. The amazing thing is that we battle uh, an enemy that can be taken down with words. Uh, and I think that once you get that, once you understand that, and as a congregation you understand that, you'll be able to put uh, that into practice within your own life. And worship is <clears throat> such an amazing weapon. When, when you put worship on, uh, the power of worship is wild, right? Like when you put worship on uh, in your home, when something's going on, when, when you feel anxiety, when you feel depression, when you feel these things that are that are attacking you, it's just the enemy. And when you put worship on, the enemy has to leave. That's the power in worship. That's the power in the things that we say, right? The, 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 the songs that we're writing right now, the words that we're writing are so powerful against the enemy that that, you know, the enemy hates what we're doing right now. IBC is is uh, is moving up, you know. There's levels, and and we're we're moving up. We're we're in uh, in a in a fighting stage, uh, and and these words that we're that that we're writing, these words that that God is giving to us over our church, uh, are powerful. So I've I've had a few people um, say that they think that they could never write a song. That it would be like a day long process for them to write write something and. Um, just to give you kind of insight on what we do when, when people come to write is it usually only takes like an hour and a half. Um, but we get together and, and we pray and we, uh, we kind of just ask around, you know, what God has been placing on our hearts and, and what we're going through at this moment. Um, and often they're aligned. The, the things that, that we want um, to write about are, are all aligned within the group, which is really wild. Um, so we usually get together, we pray, we talk about the different things that are going on, and then and then we will um, we will just begin to uh, one of us. It's usually me who will, who will just start singing uh, and worshiping, and, and out of that worship will usually come a melody or or like the first few lyrics of, of the song, um, and then by the end of it, you know, we usually come up with a with a full song and and. Uh, we, we end up demoing it quick and then see whether or not we want to record it. So if, if you are interested in songwriting at all, I encourage you very much to come out and just be a part of it and see how it goes, uh, see how we work. And, um, and I always tell people that it doesn't matter if you have a word in it or you don't, uh, you, you still help steer the ship in the song. There be, there's been plenty of times where I haven't had any of the things that I thought that were a good idea stick uh, in the song and yet I still help shape it um, so it's, it's that's still very valuable it's still very important but the fact that you want to come out you want to learn um, and, and you want to uh, practice what you feel like God is is giving to you uh, and your creativity that that's super important and I, I really encourage you to come on out and and try it out uh, we had a recent songwriting workshop here at the church and uh, the goal was to get um, mainly people from our, our congregation um, to, to come and, and be able to write and uh, and do that. But we were actually blessed to have somebody come uh, from uh, outside of town, actually an hour and a half away. Um, and being able to chat with him and, and being able to see that, uh, that his church and, and him specifically as a worship leader needed encouragement. Um, and uh, and kind of just hear the language that we're using in terms of um, that that worship is a weapon and and that uh, spiritual warfare is a real thing and and that they uh, you know worship work, works against it and so the words that we're writing for our church are really important. Um, it's a blessing to have this man out because it really put it into perspective of what we can be doing as a ministry outside of our own church. Um, 
And so we ended up uh, writing with this gentleman, and, and we wrote with a couple other members of our of our church. We had about seven people out, and uh, we ended up writing two really great songs that we're going to end up recording. And um, since then, we've been in we've kept in touch with him. But it's actually grown. Uh, now, as of as of last night, we've uh, we've got seventeen churches that are now um, joining this ministry in terms of uh, wanting to. Uh, write with us and write songs uh, for their church and then also uh, we're looking at doing um, like teaching portals for their their worship team so that uh, they can be taught that that you know the culture needs to change uh, in order for them to to go and and relay that message back to their congregation it's a cry in their heart what we're doing uh, and, and now it's we're in a position where we can say, hey, we'd like to come alongside you and, and minister to you. And, um, and I think that's important for us at IPC to really wrap our heads around is, is you know, I, th I think that our church here and our ministry here is bigger than just this small little town. Uh, we're looking for, uh, for prayer people um, because our Thursday nights are growing uh, and uh, we're finding that there's not only our needs that we're praying for, we're praying for other people's needs that are in our church, but also now outside of our church. So uh, the more people that we'd be able to have come and pray with us, uh, the better. And, and then, um, you know, if, if you wanted to get uh, involved in terms of like production and just kind of sitting in to see how everything works, uh, I want you to be involved. I don't want you to just think, oh, this is just for creative people um, or like highly creative people. Uh, I want everybody who wants to be involved to, to try to just get their feet wet uh, and see what the Lord has for you. So church, I try to live my life uh, in the sense of I'm always reaching uh, to, to grab a taste of God. I, I'm, I want to be so on fire that when people look and they see, they're like, that guy's on fire for Jesus. And I want our congregation to be like that. I want our congregation to have such a relationship with, with God that, that when it comes to worship, that we know what it is that we're walking into when we get there. And then when we get there, we don't have to be told to stand up. We don't have to be told to sit down. We just stand up and worship. We worship from where we are, with all we are, with all our hearts. And because that is that is it. You don't, you don't have to stand. You don't have to sit. You don't have to do anything other than just give all of your heart all the time to Jesus you know like this the whole thought of like heaven on earth and and you know what's what I people always used to be like Jeff what where do you go and worship and I go to the throne room and then when I go to the throne room nothing else matters it doesn't matter about about my performance or whether or not I'm lifting my hands at the right time or whether or not I'm I'm saying the right words in between because it all becomes Anointed it all becomes something that 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 trans fixes back onto the congregation like to you guys, right? Like and That's the most important thing is to just worship the Lord it, it, Nothing else matters So one of the things that that I you know would say is is when you're worshiping imagine God standing right in front of you imagine being at the feet of Jesus every time that you're worshiping to me, that is, that is what worship is. It's 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 uh, it's raising up the things that that we can, don't have control of. You know, uh, the the power in words. You know, raise a hallelujah. We sing it all the time, and and it's a powerful song. You know, the, the reason why that song was created was because the church was going through something. A little boy was dying. He was literally on his deathbed, and they had been praying and praying and praying for this little boy. And nothing was happening. He was just getting worse and worse. And everybody thought he was going to die. And the songwriter said that he had nothing left other than to worship. There was nothing left in his tank. He couldn't do anything else. So he just raised out, I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And, you know, they, so they wrote this song and they, they performed it like together. And they just, they just videotaped it on a phone. And sent it off to the family and they put it over top of the the child and they just sang it out and within <clears throat> like the next day the child started getting better and it was a, it was a miracle 
But that's the type of thing, you know, we can't accredit it to the to the uh, song necessarily. It was Jesus who did it. But, like, those songs were written for the church, for that person's church, and now for the church across all these nations because they raised up that, that need. They raised up that want. They raised up that I, we need something to happen right now. Like, that's the that's the importance and the power of 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 the song. That's the that's the importance and the power of the words that are in there. And I think that if we as a church come to realize that, then there wouldn't be any second guessing of of you know, do I want to worship? Do I want to do I want to uh, stand up? Do I want to put my hands up in the air? Do I want to clap? Do I want to give a big Jesus? You know, those things they'll just be natural. Those things will just will, will just be like, yes, God. I don't care who sees me. I don't care about what I look like. I want you guys to look like fools. Because you guys are looking like like you just are children, dancing, loving Jesus. You, know, you look out in the congregation, and our kids are dancing, and all the and all the the, the adults are just are just standing. And the thing is, is that if we were all a little bit more childlike in our worship and loving Jesus, we would all just worship to no end.